What's up guys, the snowman here back to talk some soccer today. We've got the 2024 Summer Olympics right around the corner at the end of the month. So right now I wanted to preview the women's football tournament. Canada is the reigning champ from three years ago in Japan. They'll be joined by 11 other nations to battle it out for the gold medal this summer. I want to go over the format for the soccer at these 2024 Olympics and then go through each group and talk about all the teams who will be competing in France. And this is the schedule pretty condensed compared to the World Cup or Euros as they have to fit everything in just over two weeks. Matches every three days, group stage play during the first week of the Olympics and then the top eight teams move on to the quarterfinals played on August 3rd, semis on the 6th with the gold gold medal match being played on August 10th. These are our three groups of four teams each for the women's football competition. Format wise, every nation guaranteed to play at least three group stage games against the other three teams in their group. Very similar format to the World Cup. Wins are worth three points, draws worth one, losses net you zero points. The top two sides from each group advance to the quarterfinals along with the two third place teams with the most points. So basically eight of the 12 teams move on to the quarterfinals. This was the bracket at the last Olympics in 2021. Uh, from here, it's very simple. Single elimination knockout structure. In the knockout stage, the games can go to a 30-minute extra time and penalties if necessary. Quarterfinals, semifinals, and then a bronze medal match for the two losers of the semifinals. Gold medal final for the two winners to play for the ultimate prize. As I said before, Canada, the reigning champions from last time thanks to their conquest over Sweden. So let's turn to this summer now. Starting with Group A, just want to run through some key notes about each country. We've got the host France, joined by Colombia, Canada, and New Zealand. This is definitely the weakest group on paper. France and Canada, the favorites to advance to the quarterfinals. For the French, it was another underwhelming World Cup one year ago, a penalty shootout defeat to Australia that sent them packing in the quarters for the third successive World Cup. Uh, things have improved since then. They reached the final of the UEFA Nations League, but fell in that final to Spain. There's definitely enough talent in the squad to win a medal this year. Center back Wendy Renard still going strong, their 33-year-old captain. I just worry about France's consistency, the ability to put it together for six matches in a row. I don't have as much trust in them uh, managing a big tournament like say a Canada who doesn't quite have as much talent on paper but knows how to grind out tough results. Obviously Canada's got the gold medal from three years ago in their pockets but they couldn't even make it out of the group stage at last year's World Cup. I expect this Canadian side to be similar to the one that had three straight matches go to penalties just this calendar year alone. They won't be as flashy as the other top sides but somehow some way can they eke out wins like they always seem to do. Uh, Colombia was the ultimate surprise of the 2023 World Cup with their historic quarterfinal run. Held their own against England even in defeat. The Colombians have had some injury issues this year with Chelsea star Myra Ramirez and 19-year-old Linda Caicedo. But if the squad is intact, I could see them challenging France or Canada if everything goes well. I don't have the same amount of confidence in New Zealand. They have the lowest odds at this entire event. Very few wins against non-Oceana opponents in the last couple years. Their most recent friendly is a pair of losses against Japan. Hard to see where the goals are coming from for the Kiwis in France. Moving on to Group B, likely the strongest if you just go by the rankings in recent form. The four-time gold medalist USA will do battle against Zambia, Germany, and Australia. Big picture view for the US women is that they need to get their swagger back. 12 years without a gold medal. The Americans left the World Cup last summer with their tail between their legs bowing out to Sweden in the round of 16. Uh, the U.S. hasn't quite lived up to their serial winner status the last handful of years, but there's certainly reason to believe they'll be back in the gold medal match this time around. Seven wins on the trot right now. Gold Cup title in February. She believes Cup title in April. New coach and Emma Hayes. Uh, loads of skilled players for her to tinker with, including the electric Mallory Swanson, who's back in fine form after that nasty knee injury last year. They sit firmly as Group B favorites, but Australia and Germany will be right there with them. Australia will be without injured superstar Sam Kerr due to an ACL injury, but they proved last year they still have quality players without Kerr reaching the World Cup semis. Plenty of experience in the squad with vets like Ford, Rasso, Van Egmond, Catley. They were all a part of the team that came in fourth place at the last Olympics. Meanwhile, you have Germany, whose first time uh, ever group stage exit at last year's World Cup produced one of the biggest shocks in tournament history. New coach since then, who doesn't seem solidified on the lineup despite having world-class players on this team sheet. 
Germany needed two comeback efforts in recent friendlies against Poland, a team who's never made a major tournament. I think German fans are rightly cautious heading into these Olympics, despite the fact that they'll always be a medal contender when they show up. A tough draw for Zambia. They'll likely be on the outside looking in in Group B. Positive steps this decade. They actually defeated Germany in a pre-World Cup friendly last summer, but despite having the star power with sensational players like Barbara Banda, Zambia has struggled to get results on the biggest stage. Finally, we have Group C. Where else to start but with the defending World Cup champion Spain? They're accompanied by three challengers in Japan, Nigeria, and Brazil. Got to begin with Spain, who are the new queens of football. Obviously, they won the most iconic trophy in the sport last year in the World Cup. Just dazzled the entire way through but then they backed up that triumph with success in the Nations League this February hardly even challenged by the likes of the Netherlands and France it's uh, not just the impressive form 15 wins in their last 16 games but it's the strength and quality of the wins for Spain they're right up there at the top of the list in terms of teams that can win the gold medal in fact we'll look at the overall odds in just a bit but Spain has the last three Ballon d'Or winners on their team between Puteas and Bonmati uh, there's so much continuity with the Barcelona players so to me Spain just on another level let's not forget though Japan was one of the few teams to get the better of Spain in recent times a 4-0 dismantling in the World Cup group stage last year sadly for Japan the form has flipped upside down since that amazing victory not that many highlights other than edging out North Korea to qualify for these Olympics they'll be relying heavily on the goal scoring prowess of Mina Tanaka and the defensive leadership of Saki Kumagai then we have Brazil, who like Germany, coming off a historic first time flaming out in the group stage of a World Cup. Uh, their form has been a mixed bag this year, but more importantly, this is the final international tournament for the legend Marta, who announced her retirement earlier this year. Six World Cup appearances, this will be her sixth Olympics. She's the only player to ever score at five separate Olympic games, so hopefully she gives us a few more moments of magic. And don't discount Nigeria. Four clean sheets in Olympic qualifying. They'll be tough to break down. The Nigerians earned a ton of respect making the knockout round at the 2023 World Cup. They'll need to be as tactically disciplined as ever to make it out of this intimidating Group C at the Olympics. So those are the groups. Just want to look at the title odds and give some final thoughts now. These are the current odds. According to DraftKings, I'm a little bit shocked. The U.S. slightly favored over Spain. Like I said before, Spain, the cream of the crop in women's soccer right now. Their team littered with stars from top to bottom. There's loads of pressure on the United States and from 1991 to 2015. In those 12 combined World Cups and Olympics, they finished in at least third place every single time, but nowadays that invincibility has worn off. Again, round of 16 defeat last summer. That's unprecedented for the Stars and Stripes. The host France with the third best odds. Only tough thing for them is that they would be on Spain's half of the bracket if both teams won their group. Then four through seven, Japan, Australia, Germany, Brazil, uh, Canada at plus 1400. That's realistically the lowest I'd look for a potential champ. Clearly from three years ago, Canada has a puncher's chance at Olympic gold, but I do see this as an eight-team tournament. I don't really envision the bottom four getting any further than the quarterfinals at best. And if I had to pick a winner, I'd say there's an extremely high chance that Spain backs up World Cup glory with an Olympic gold. I would definitely lean towards saying they're the most likely to win this 2024 Olympic event. Thanks a lot for watching my women's soccer Olympic preview. Please leave a comment. Let me know what you thought about my analysis, who you think will win this tournament. Uh, like and subscribe if you're enjoying the soccer and football content. And I'll be back very soon. Cheers.